All right, guys, today we're talking about the top five fishing rookie mistakes. All right, once again, this is Connor from Out of Work Outdoors, and I will be going through my personal five rookie mistakes. And yes, it cost me a lot of money when I made these mistakes. But at the same time, I'm trying to help the weekend anglers. So it's going to cover everybody, okay? So when I first started fishing, I would only go fishing when the reports are good. You know, good bass is biting good. White bass is biting good. You know, you look at the game warden reports, the Oklahoma bulletins, things like that. But the thing is that you got to understand the key word there is reports, meaning it already happened. By the time you read it, it's probably a week behind, okay? So that's a rookie mistake. In order to, to be good at fishing, you have to be the guy that's generating those mistakes those reports you gotta get kind of understand what i'm saying it's like you want you want to be the guy that's going to go out there and find what the bite is instead of waiting for the report where the warden says yeah you know largemouth bass is fair on spinner baits and you know five ten foot of water or stripers are good and you know behind the dams or stripers are starting to stage up stuff like that you should already be fishing that stuff you shouldn't be waiting for the reports to come out if you're waiting for the reports to come out you're still a rookie and that is the number one rookie mistake so don't be the guy listening for the reports you should be the guy making the reports all right guys before I get to number two I need you guys to do me a favor click the like button click the subscribe button and last but not least ring the bell we got a lot of these videos coming down the pipe and a lot of good information that will help you improve your game so help me out by helping you out all right so number two number two is a weather thing okay so when i was starting out i'd always pick the right times to go fishing we call it prime time here prime time is simply the golden hour if you're a photographer it's the five to seven hours or seven to nine hours in the morning or afternoon. And we never fished the daytime, right? So if you woke up late, you didn't go fishing. If you had something in the way, you didn't go fishing. But now we fished, we fished anywhere, anytime, okay? So that's what I'm trying to say is when you're a rookie, you, you, you always pick the days, the good days to go fishing. And when you go, you always catch fish. But as a more seasoned veteran now, we actually pick the hard days to go fishing or actually we just say we're going fishing on Saturday. As long as it's not dangerous, we're going fishing on Saturday. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's blowing 22 miles per hour. I don't care if it's 37 degrees out or 107. We're going fishing. I don't care what kind of fish we're fishing for. We're going fishing because what that does is... If you hit those tough, 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 tough days and you only catch five fish, you're going to win that tournament that day. So it's in a sense, you're practicing for those bad tournament days. So the more exposure you get to these bad days, the better understanding you will have when, you, when you're going to go to a tournament and you look at the conditions that are forecast and it's going to be the same as in a day you went fishing like say two years ago and you already know it's going to be a hard day so you can better prepare for it mentally and tackle wise okay so that's a rookie mistake so how do you fix that simple you just say we're going fish on saturday seven to two we're going done no arguments go show up fish okay keep doing that you're just going to get better and better and better Okay, so number three on the list for rookie mistakes is favorite lures and favorite rods and reels, okay? Uh, when, when I first started, I'm very, I was very guilty of this because I love throwing a topwater. I love throwing a frog. I would throw that all the time. Even post-frontal conditions, I would still throw the frog. You're not supposed to do that, okay? Post-frontal, put that topwater stuff away. Anything that basically moves really, really fast, you kind of want to put that stuff away. 
the you gotta resort to you know your slow moving baits because the the bass are not willing to chase. So what does that mean? That means you should have an array of lures that can do certain things really well. Shaky heads are real good post frontal. Ned rigs are pretty good post frontal. Finesse baits, finesse jigs, good post frontal. You know, a big honk and crankbait, a big top water. A 10 inch worm, 12 inch worm, you might want to put that away for post frontal conditions. Okay, so you can't have a favorite lure, so you need to you need to get used to that. Okay, but don't get me wrong, you should still have your, your favorite lure in the back of your head because if the conditions line up for your favorite lure, you're gonna smash them and you're gonna have a real good time on tournament trail, and you might actually win some money too. So, with that being said, no favorite baits. You have confidence baits, but no favorite baits. So that was probably one of the biggest hurdles I had to get over when I was uh, coming into the tournament world. Okay. Number quattro. Uh, quattro is uh, you're not willing to go fish by yourself. You always want to go fish with a friend. And I think that's a, that's a big, that's a big uh, hurdle that you have to overcome. Because when you're fishing with a friend, whether it's on the bank, on the boat, or even in kayaks, uh, you tend to ask your friends for feedback on how the day is going, how they catching them, how you're catching them. You guys start bragging back and forth to each other, and it it doesn't really engage you in the world of problem solving. So if you go all by yourself, there's no feedback from your friends. You know, there's no walkie talkies involved. Ain't nobody out there but you. You have to in a way, learn how to uh, figure out things on, on your own, right? So when after about three or four successful trips, you will gain confidence in your own uh, decision-making ability. And there's one thing right here. It's called a gut. You know, your gut feeling gets really, really good, okay? So over time, as you continue to fish by yourself and your gut feeling gets better and better and better, one day, you're going to say, you're always going to have to go with your gut feeling. And right now, my gut feeling is pretty good. Okay, so if I go out there and my gut feeling says, you know, say, say this. My brain says you should be doing that. And my gut says, no, you should be doing this. I'm going with the gut feeling. Okay, that's how much your gut feelings should be trusted once you, you know, get start getting better. Okay, so that's number four. You know, stop fishing with a buddy, build some confidence, build a gut feeling. You can because at the end of the day, you don't blame yourself. You can't blame your buddy, even if he did not catch your ten pounder at the boat, missed him by a foot with the net and everything. You know, I'm still thinking about that sometimes. All right, number five. Number five is something that all the the rookies, uh, even myself, you'll have is what I call. A secret spot, right? A secret spot. You caught them there last year. You should be able to catch them there again this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, you don't know this, but that spot, that's a community hole. <laughs> everybody, everybody fishes that spot. And on top of that, that spot that you caught them on last year, don't expect it to be good this year. All right? So there, let me give you an example. Uh... The Tuesday nights. Anybody that follows us on Tuesday nights, right? Uh, we go through a series of lakes, and I have one of my lakes is my favorite lake, right? My the first, very first tournament I ever won was on one rock. I won three tournaments on one rock. Like, it was literally one rock, and I thought I got this thing dialed, right? Like it's my favorite rock. It has paid, like, I don't know, like, 300, 400 bucks. My favorite rock. I'll go back the next year, and I will win off my favorite rock again. Well, guess what happened next year? I got humbled. Nothing lived on that rock. So, that was a rookie mistake. I had to learn from it. You do not have favorite spots. You can have good spots, but you can't have favorites. You know, it's good to go check it, but you got to give up on it quick. Give it five minutes. If there's nothing on it, you got to go. You got to go out to the, the next spot. I mean, fish are kind of territorial. They're still around there. They're just not on that rock, okay? So they might be around that point, or they might be a little bit deeper. They might be a little bit shallower. It depends on the conditions. So 
that's something as a rookie you need to figure out. You got to get over that hump because if you don't get over that hump, you're never going to be a better angler. Um, so, so anyways, you know, that's my top five. Let me know if you have, if you're stuck on one of these things because I was and uh, maybe we can help each other out. I'll pre I'm pretty sure other guys, if you leave comments as to how you overcome your problems, I'm pretty sure they'll benefit from it too. So let me know how you overcome, overcame your problems and became a better angler. And once again, like the chat, like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification, and I will see you on the out the next one. Okay. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you guys on the next one.